Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Beatles Forever. Uh, Today, we're going to look at the five reasons why the Beatles broke up. Well, the Beatles became a band when they were teenagers, and the band's founding member was John Lennon. He was 16, and he had a skiffle band, and he, he was a member of the Quarrymen at that time, and he played at a church fete when he met a member of the audience, Paul McCartney, who was 15 years old. Uh, Paul went backstage after the show and played and sang John the song 20 Flight Rock. And John was impressed because he knew all the lyrics and because Paul was a good musician. And John asked him that day if he wanted to join the band. Uh, But he was a little bit nervous, thinking Paul might be too talented a musician and try to take over. But he put his doubts aside and asked Paul. And so John thinks Paul told him yes the very next day. Then John created the band The Beatles, and George joined when he was only 14 years old. He had to audition for John on the top of an upper-decker bus, and he played John American guitar riffs, and John was impressed, so he got in. Uh, Ringo was about 20 years old when he joined, uh, because Pete Best was their original drummer. And then later, after they met Ringo, the Beatles decided they wanted to get rid of Pete Best, and he was asked to leave by the manager. So now... They were so young, then they broke up in 1970. John was uh, 29 years old, Paul was 27 years old, George was 27, and Ringo was 29. Uh, They were grown, and they were all married, and they all seemed not to be able to come together as a group to produce music. And John was sort of stepping away as a leader, and he didn't want to be tied down by the Beatles. Paul, on the other hand, still loved being in the band, but he was getting the feeling it wasn't mutual. So... Here are some of the reasons why the band decided to call it a day. The first thing was the death of the manager, Brian Epstein. And Brian was the man who got the group into stardom. He died of a drug overdose on August 27, 1967. And Brian, even though he wasn't much older than the Beatles, was like a father figure for them. He made things happen, and he was always looking out for the Beatles' best interest. And Brian kept them motivated, and when he died, there was no one pushing them to make records or write songs. Paul tried to fill the role, but the other Beatles felt like he was trying to be bossy. Paul said, we're always fighting that discipline. There's really no one there now to say, do it, Dad. Daddy's gone now, he says. And then George Harrison stated, the Beatles have been in the doldrums for at least a year. Ever since Mr. Epstein passed away, it's never been the same. He added in deadpan, maybe we should have a divorce. After a moment of awkward silence, John then said it would help the children. So this was a major crack in the Beatles as a group. Next, George Harrison wanted to have more material on albums, and he didn't enjoy the fame of being in the Beatles. And when the Beatles got started, John Lennon and Paul McCartney were the main songwriters in the band. When George had gotten sick back in 1962, George decided to try and write a song. He ended up writing Don't Bother Me. George didn't really like it, but it proved to him that he could write a song, and it gave him hope of writing better songs in the future. I really like that song. It's so different than the standard love song and and a negative lyric, Don't Bother Me. (laughs) So later, George did improve his songwriting skills, but because he didn't start out writing when John and Paul did, no one was really paying him any attention. Paul would treat George like a session man, and John was eager to replace him when he suggested leaving. Um, John stated in an interview George didn't even used to sing when we brought him into the group. He was a guitarist. He wasn't in the same league for a long time. That's not putting him down. He just hadn't had the practice at writing that we had. So I love John's honesty here. You can see from that that they didn't see that George had learned and improved and ended up writing songs that rivaled John and Paul's songs. And George Martin also admitted to uh, neglecting George Harrison and his ideas and songs. Martin said he was concentrating on the guys that were giving him the hits. Another reason that George wasn't happy was that he didn't really want to be famous, and he felt anxious with the stress of the concerts, the interviews, the travels by plane, etc. And when John made his comment about the Beatles being more famous than Jesus, he was afraid that he was going to be shot. John was distracted by drugs. Uh, The Beatles were always being uh, introduced to drink and drugs throughout their career, but the one drug the Beatles weren't into was heroin, but John soon started to get into it. Paul said uh, he was getting into harder drugs than we had been into, and so his songs were taking on more references to heroin. Until that point, we had made rather mild, oblique references to pot or LSD, 
But now John started talking about fixes and monkeys, and it was harder terminology, which the rest of us weren't into. We were disappointed that he was getting into heroin because we didn't really know how we could help him. We just hoped it wouldn't go too far. In actual fact, he did cl- get clean, but this was the period when he was was on it. And it was a tough period for John, but often that adversity and craziness can lead to good art, as I think it did in this case. And Paul McCartney said that in the book Many Years From Now by Barry Miles. And then hey, bull, hey uh, dullblog.com brings up a good point regarding John and his withdrawal from the band. Uh, John's muse seemed to disappear for almost the entirety of 1969. Uh, the ballad of John and Yoko and Come Together are not the work of an artist at the top of his game, and why meeting the love of his life seemed to turn him into an angrier, more unhappy, and more visibly unhealthy-looking person. Heroin addiction explains these things, unlike comparatively mild substances like pot or ones that take their toll over decades of abuse like alcohol. Heroin's form of oblivion seems to have brought an amb- anvil down on John Lennon's creative mechanism, and Miles's quote makes clear that the physical and psychological side effects of junkiedom walled John off from the others in a way that I don't think even Yoko alone could have done. The heroin made him moody and hard to talk to, and made him back away from the group, and it took away his creativity. The next reason is the business end of the Beatles' breakup. Well, the love of money is the root of all evil, and in this case, money created another crack in the Beatles remaining as, the, as a group. According to Wikipedia, in, early in 1969, Apple Corps was plagued by mismanagement and was losing money. On January 26, Lennon and Yoko Ono met with Alan Klein, the founder of APKCO Records, regarding managerial eva- advice. Uh, Lennon requested that Klein represent his business interests in the band, and McCartney chose to be represented by American entertainment lawyers Lee and John Eastman, the father and brother of his girlfriend Linda Eastman, whom he married on March 12th. In April, after a series of rancorous meetings between Klein, the Eastmans, and the Beatles, Klein was appointed as the band's business manager on an interim basis with the Eastmans as the Beatles' lawyers. Uh, the band members' quarrels and disharmony over musical matters soon permeated into business discussions. And given a choice between Klein and the Eastmans, Harrison and Starr opted for Klein, and the Eastmans were dismissed as the Beatles' legal representation. And on the May 8th, Lennon, Harrison, and Starr signed a contract with Klein to be the band's business manager. This further aggravated the underlying mistrust and antipathy experienced within the band. Rolling Stone states that Klein is easily the least famous of the four new people in the Beatles' lives, but arguably the one who played the biggest role in their demise. So Paul brought in lawyers to protect the Beatle legacy, and suing the Beatles was the only way to do it. Paul said John, Ringo, and George thanked him for it later. And the last reason that the Beatles broke up is uh, John, George, and Ringo lost interest. Um, Through the years, the band started to pull apart a little bit at a time. As I mentioned earlier, when the Beatles' manager died, the Beatles seemed to have lost their focus. Paul loved the band and wanted them to stay together. He was the one who would call everyone up and try to get them into the studio. And at one point, almost everyone left the band at one point or another. Uh, Ringo, it is said, was the first one to leave the group. This was during the making of the White Album, which Paul called the Tension Album. It was during this time that Ringo felt like an outsider in the band. He felt that the end of the band was near. Ringo said he couldn't take it anymore. There was no magic, and the relationships were terrible. I knew we were all messed up in the all messed up stage, and it wasn't just me. The whole thing was going down. Ringo stopped by to tell John he was leaving because he felt out of it, and you three are really close. John felt out of it, too. And then Ringo stopped by to tell Paul, and Paul felt the same way, out of it. So Ringo said that he didn't see the need to tell George. <laughs> It's for some reason, I don't know why, and then he took off with his family to Spain. Later, the band was sent a telegram to Ringo asking him to come back, saying he was the best rock and roll drummer in the world and that they loved him, and he went back. So the second person to leave was George. Uh, we all saw that on the Let It Be documentary. Uh, George had gotten angry about the way Paul was criticizing him on his guitar playing, so George decided to leave, stating, I'm leaving the band now. He also said, See you around the clubs. He wrote in his diary, got up, went to Twickenham, rehearsed until lunch time, left the Beatles, went home. The group 
met at Ringo's home, and George and his demands stated it, it was decided it would be better if we got back together and finished the records. Twickenham Studios was very cold and not very nice atmosphere, so we decided to abandon that and go to Savelle Road into the recording studio. John Lennon told the band on September 20th, 1969, that he wanted to end the group. He was ready to start his life with Yoko. And it seems like uh, if all the Beatles had done solo albums during these times, the group may have remained together. It seems like they would have, it would have given them a fresh perspective, and then they can come back as a group ready to rock. That wasn't really done too much back then, so that's too bad. So Paul, he's the one that left the group in August 1970, he began to dissolve the partnership because of the Klein situation, and he was the only Beatle that didn't want Klein handling the band's business matters. So these are the main reasons why the group broke up. It's a shame because who knows what other wonderful things they could have created if they had remained together. Their solo albums showed just how much more creativity they had to offer, and we could be glad that, they, that we had these albums that they created together, as well as the solo albums that give us an additional insight into their talent and personality. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, if you could give it a thumbs up, that would be great. And thanks to all who have subscribed. And for those who haven't, if you could, that would be good too. Well, I hope everybody's been having a good day. And tune in again soon to The Beatles Forever. Thank you. Bye.